Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here and this is the third and final learning object in my starting point for flipped learning workshop at FlipCon Australia 2017. This particular learning object is going to focus on what flipped learning is by actually looking at an example of a classroom pre and post flip uh, and then looking at a bit of a definition. Rather than try and describe what flipped learning is, I just want to show you what it looks like. Now this particular video that we're going to watch here this is a physics teacher, this is a double period, and this is the classroom prior to flipping. This is John Thomas Palmer, and he's teaching a, an advanced physics class. Now you can see that it's traditional pedagogy, there is a lot of, well, whiteboard and talk. The students aren't really doing too much other than taking notes. You may have noticed there's a brief moment just there where he came down to do a demonstration down here, and that was it. And then that moment at the end there, that was the assessment moment in the classroom, right at the very end of that double period, about 85 minutes. That's traditional pedagogy. There's not a whole lot of active learning happening other than whatever notes are being taken and uh, whatever questions get asked. Now, in terms of the demonstration, if you happen to be sitting at the back of the room and you missed it, tough luck. You didn't really get another go over them because there wasn't the opportunity for that to happen in this particular classroom because you can see there's a lot going on. The next clip that we're going to watch is the same teacher, the same topic, but 12 months later. And it's after John has actually started flipping his class. And the difference is immediately apparent. So the very start of the class is actually the end of the traditional pedagogy. We're actually looking at the assessment, the formative assessment task, because the students have dealt with the pre-learning before coming to class. There's also an opportunity to do a more uh, structured assessment there. You can see the students were taking notes. But this is the classroom, and you can see that there are different groups of students all around the room working on different activities. Some of them are working on lab reports, some of them are getting some support and some feedback from the teacher, but you can see that they're all working on individual learning tasks. This is the group learning space. They've completed the learning object in the individual learning space and they've now come in. But you can see that the teacher and this particular student, that student's able to get the extra support that she needs. These three students here are able to get the extra support that they need because he's not tied to the front of the room as the teacher trying to do the explanation, the explicit teaching. He's able to give that extra support. Now the impact on the student-teacher relationships here will be absolutely massive because he's able to spend more time talking one-on-one. -on -one. Now in terms of the demonstration, the practical side of things, students are able to get up close and personal with the demonstration. Here's the teacher just here, working with an individual group of students. You can still do whole class things if you do need to. You can see he's pulling everyone in. He needs to cover something with everybody at the same time. There's nothing wrong with doing that as needed in small doses. Going back to the demonstration, you can see here, this is a small group. This is what, one, two, three, four. There's seven students there, six students there. And they're able to get up close and personal with the demonstration. And you can see by the movement of their hands with these symbols, I can't recall what that means. They're able to get up close and personal, ask questions, have looks at the demonstration as it's done multiple times in front of them. And in terms of active learning, that's gonna be much more beneficial for them than a single demonstration at the front of the room and they're sitting somewhere towards the back or anywhere not in the front row. The benefits for the students here are enormous. And at the same time, you can see in the background, there are other groups of students working on their own tasks that they need to complete. The pedagogical benefits here are huge. Now, I'm sure you can all think of your own classroom and how you might be able to apply this. What is the thing, what is the thing that you would rather do with your students in classroom instead of chalk and talk? So flip learning is a pedagogical approach. We take the explicit instruction, the direct instruction from the group learning space, and we put it in the individual learning space. What we do then is that the group learning space then becomes all about active learning, where we're doing dynamic interactive activities where students are applying and analyzing using the concepts, the skills, the knowledge in a way that embeds that knowledge for later recall. This has a huge impact on your student-teacher relationships. And for those students who need that social support and that emotional support, you're able to provide it. So this is the last of the learning objects for my starting with flipped learning workshop. I hope these have been helpful and I'll see you in the workshop. Thanks for watching.